Imagine this. You're balancing a career that demands time and energy, a family that relies on you, and the constant pull to be successful. Time never seems to be on your side, and no matter how much you accomplish, there's often a nagging feeling that it's not quite enough. That elusive enough is like a finish line that keeps moving, always just out of reach. If that resonates with you, you're not alone. Today, we're going to talk about something that affects nearly all of us, yet isn't always openly discussed. It's the idea that, in the pursuit of being perfect, we may be missing out on the best parts of life. Embracing imperfection, as odd as it sounds, could be the key to genuine happiness, satisfaction, and even success. Breen Brown, a researcher and author, has spent decades studying what it means to live fully, to feel at peace, and to find meaning. Her book, The Gifts of Imperfection, offers a new way of looking at life, a way that invites us to embrace imperfection, not as a limitation, but as a source of freedom. It's about moving beyond fear and recognizing that our true worth doesn't come from what we achieve, but from who we are. So let's break down her core ideas and see how they can make a real difference in our lives. Chapter one, redefining vulnerability, the strength in being real. Let's start with a concept that can make many of us uncomfortable, vulnerability. Typically, the idea of being vulnerable feels at odds with strength. We're taught to believe that showing any crack in our armor could be a weakness, a flaw, something that could be exploited. But Brown redefines vulnerability as strength, not just in theory, but in practice. Think about it. The most powerful moments in life often come from being real, from dropping the defenses and speaking from the heart. For many men, vulnerability may feel like a soft concept, something that doesn't belong in a world that values resilience, confidence, and competence. But here's the reality. Vulnerability is courage in its rawest form. It's the courage to show up fully as yourself, knowing that you may be judged, knowing that it may not go perfectly, but choosing to do it anyway. Breen Brown emphasizes that it's this ability to be authentic, to be open, that allows us to connect more deeply with others. And ultimately, those connections bring us fulfillment. Imagine a situation with a close friend or even a colleague, someone you respect. That respect, that sense of trust you've built, comes from moments of honesty, moments when you've been willing to show up as you are, imperfections and all. This doesn't mean oversharing or bearing your soul to everyone you meet. It's about allowing your true self to be seen by those who matter. It's about showing up fully in your relationships. A takeaway here is simple but powerful. Try to allow a bit more of yourself to be seen. Start with something small. The next time a friend or family member asks how you're doing, resist the urge to brush it off with a quick, I'm fine if that's not the truth. Maybe there's something weighing on you, a stress or concern that you've been holding on to. Opening up about it, even just a bit, can be the beginning of a deeper, more authentic connection. Chapter two, the trap of perfectionism, chasing an illusion. Let's talk about perfectionism. Perfectionism is one of those concepts that, on the surface, seems admirable. It's often sold to us as a key to success. Work harder, achieve more, push yourself to reach an ideal. But what if that ideal is actually impossible to reach? Brown describes perfectionism as a 20-ton shield that we believe will protect us from criticism, from judgment, from disappointment. Yet instead of protecting us, it just weighs us down, preventing us from truly living and trying. This is something so many of us can relate to. How many times have you held back because something wasn't good enough? How often do you second-guess yourself? Question whether you've done enough, been enough. This mindset creates a vicious cycle. If we constantly judge ourselves by an unreachable standard, we're always going to fall short. Imagine this. You're working on a project, putting in the hours, making it as good as it can be. But instead of feeling satisfaction when it's complete, you're left thinking about what could have been better, what someone might critique. Instead of enjoying your achievement, you're already preparing for the next one. Brown encourages us to look at perfectionism not as a goal, but as a roadblock. When we're obsessed with perfection, we miss the beauty of what's in front of us, and we risk never fully engaging with our own lives. A practical approach here is to give yourself permission to be good enough, 
The next time you're working on something, try not to let it be about perfection. Instead, focus on the experience, on the growth you're achieving. You may find that freeing yourself from perfectionism allows you to actually enjoy the process, to learn more, and even to take risks you might otherwise avoid. Chapter 3. Avoiding the Numbing Trap Choosing Connection Over Distraction There's no denying that modern life is stressful. Work demands, family responsibilities, and the constant flood of information can leave us feeling burned out. When that happens, many of us instinctively look for ways to turn off or numb out. Maybe it's through scrolling endlessly on your phone, zoning out in front of the TV, or having a drink just to unwind. These are forms of numbing. And while they may offer temporary relief, Brown explains that they often leave us feeling even more disconnected. Think of the last time you felt truly relaxed, truly present. It probably wasn't while mindlessly scrolling on your phone or zoning out in front of a screen. True relaxation comes from connection, whether that's connecting with other people or even just with ourselves. Brown suggests that instead of numbing ourselves, we should focus on seeking genuine connection and meaning. This doesn't mean giving up on relaxation. It's about finding ways to unwind that bring true fulfillment. Next time you feel overwhelmed, consider reaching out instead of retreating. Instead of going to a quick distraction, pick up the phone, call a friend, or take a walk and reflect on what's going on. These moments of genuine connection, even if brief, are far more likely to recharge you than hours spent numbing out. Chapter 4. Self-Compassion The Power of Treating Yourself Like a Friend For many of us, being hard on ourselves feels like the responsible thing to do. We're quick to criticize our mistakes, quick to judge ourselves for any perceived failure. But here's the catch. If you're constantly criticizing yourself, you're reinforcing a fear of failure that may keep you from taking risks or trying new things. Brown explains that self-compassion isn't about letting yourself off the hook. It's about being as understanding with yourself as you would be with a friend. Think about someone in your life who you care about. If they mess up, would you berate them? Or would you try to encourage them to keep going? When you practice self-compassion, you're building resilience. You're giving yourself the space to make mistakes, learn, and grow without the constant pressure to be perfect. So here's a challenge. Next time you feel that critical voice starting to speak, pause and ask yourself what you'd say if you were talking to a friend in your position. Offer yourself that same encouragement. Over time, this can make a profound difference in how you approach challenges and setbacks. Chapter 5. The Power of Gratitude Finding Joy in Everyday Moments Often, we think of happiness as a destination, something to be reached once we've achieved enough. But Brown shares a powerful insight here. Gratitude isn't about reaching a goal. It's about recognizing the value in what's already around you. When we practice gratitude, we're training ourselves to see life's blessings, no matter how small. And that builds joy and resilience because it keeps us grounded, even during difficult times. Gratitude doesn't have to be grand gestures or major reflections. It's about finding value in small, everyday things a conversation with a loved one, a beautiful sunset, or even just a moment of quiet. This simple act of acknowledging good things in your life, however small, can have a powerful impact. Try this. Each day, make it a habit to think of three things you're grateful for. They don't have to be life-changing. The small stuff counts. And over time, you may notice a shift, a greater awareness of the good in your life, and a stronger ability to handle whatever comes your way. Conclusion. Embracing imperfection as a path to wholeness. In a world that's constantly telling us to be more, do more, and achieve more, it can be radical to stop and say, I am enough. Embracing imperfection isn't about giving up. It's about showing up fully as we are. When we let go of the need to be perfect, we allow ourselves the freedom to truly live, to connect deeply, and to grow in ways we may never have expected. If you're ready to take that first step, remember, it doesn't have to be big. Start small. Let a friend see a little more of your real self. Forgive yourself for a mistake. Appreciate the small things around you. And remember, this journey is ongoing. Embracing imperfection is a daily choice, one that can lead you to a fuller, richer life. 
If this message resonates with you, take a moment to like, share with others who might need it, and subscribe to the channel. Let's keep growing and learning together.